You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. So glad to be hanging out here with you today. Thank you for taking the time. Appreciate it. Yes, we do appreciate you taking the time. And today we're going to bridge a couple of subjects that have been brought up before. We had a pilot who had a flyaway at a construction site, and he first tried flying from an elevated parking structure. But if you do that, there are key points that you have to hit in order for that to work. It didn't work for him. Uh, and then he did a calibration in an area where he probably should not have done a calibration. And then this is how the error chain perpetuates. When you make one error, this is why drone piloting is, and this is why building a drone program is so hard and you need to be so specific because it's really simple. If you make one error, that error can exacerbate to another error, to another error, and to another error. So we have to be really careful and systematic when we fly. So today's question is brought to you by our good friends at the Drone You community. Frankly, we are grateful for you and we appreciate you. And we're glad that some of you are out there and you're still making money. I know it's harder than normal and I know it takes perseverance, but guess what? Tenacity is the key for success. So thank you again to the Drone You community. If you want to join us for some free webinars or you're thinking about becoming a member of this awesome community, let me give you just one reason as to why. Yes, it is a drone-based content library. In fact, there's not a larger online content library that even has this much depth that's available online. The Drone You content library is not only enormous, but it also serves more than the drone industry. I'm not just trying to sell this to other people. Here's what I'm saying. Our business course, which is sold by other competitors for thousands of dollars, is included for free with membership. Membership, as you know, is only $47 a month and does give you access to all the classes. Why do we do that? Because we know the people who want to be successful, they should not be limited by time. They should not be limited with drip style classes. If they want to learn it all as fast as they want, they should have it all as fast as they want. If they want to learn on the field, they should be able to learn on the field. If they want to learn to be a more skilled pilot, to acquire bigger, better jobs, to make a name for themselves in their neighborhood, well, we know that those people will be successful given the right resources, which is why we made the resources. If you wanna join a community unlike any other that in a time still continues to keep people motivated and inspired, but isn't afraid to have conflicting conversation in a nice form, then you will not want to miss another day of not being inside of the Drone You community. Check it out, droneu.education. Hey, Rob and Paul, this is Tom from the West Coast of California. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts around this subject matter of IMU calibrations based on construction sites. Uh, I was hired last year to, for the first time. I've never really crashed a drone, but last year I was flying uh, around four newly constructed buildings for a job. And uh, we first started to try to take off from the parking uh, structure, which was higher up above so we could get a better bird's eye view. But as you know, there's a lot of metal within the parking structure, so it was couldn't really take off from there. There were some issues with that. So went down to the ground level and eventually, after um, calibrating the IMU, was able to get off and fly around the buildings a few times and was fine. And then went over to the other side of the building where it was more open and uh, obviously there must be a lot of metal in the ground for the construction area, but, uh, you know, was able to take off, didn't have to recalibrate it at that time. And uh, the drone, once I got up about eight feet in the air, kind of held it there for a second or two just to make sure it was kind of stable and all that and started to uh, go off to the right. And the next thing you know, I 
started getting uh, the drone to kind of fly away and uh, was able to slightly control it to the point where I was able to bring it down because I never got that high, but it was kind of going on, on its own. So I'm, I'm guessing it kind of enters almost like an Addy mode without uh, the GPS and um, all that metal throws it off. So it's hard to control a drone if you're not ready for that. So luckily I got it down and, and landed it kind of harshly, but it kind of damaged the gimbal. And that's all that had to be replaced. So my questions are, and I just had another experience where I I flew over one and a new construction site recently and uh, started to get the same experience. But in this situation, I was, you know, being able to fly really well, was able to land it successfully this time, more controlled, but it definitely wanted to kind of go in its own direction as though it didn't have GPS. So I'm just curious your thoughts on how to mitigate that and what has been your experiences going forward so you don't have those kind of problems. I've just figured that's something good for people to know out there so they don't crash drones and cause flyaways or damage. So love to hear your thoughts on all that to uh, mitigate that for anybody that ever gets hired for a job. Thanks very much. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate uh, the details too, because that is helpful in terms of figuring out what your situation was. So uh, in our walk, Mm -hmm. you had mentioned there were a couple of things going on here that were potential problems for Tom um, in terms of the issues that he was having. So uh, help the poor gent out. Okay, so this is where I really enjoy having a podcast and not just putting out articles to say you can take off from parking garages for best visual line of sight because there's caveats to that, right? You Mm -hmm. have to take off from an elevated position and your elevated position cannot be elevated by use of magnetic materials. Um, Including? Including steel. Anything magnetic, literally anything magnetic at all. Um, And I say that because... I think it's so important to understand that, yes, we say you want to take off from one of the highest positions possible, right? But at the same time, if you're not taking off on top of a case or two or, you know, doing something along those lines, well, you know, you may have a bigger problem. You know, I think it's so important to discuss details. And we talk about this error chain, right? Error chain number one, he he tried taking off from the parking garage, right? From the, I'm sure it was the top level. And he probably did not, A, use a spectrometer to see what type of wireless interference he was facing. Because if it was microwave interference, it could have nothing to do with anything that's magnetic at all. So the first error was, number one, not conducting the IMU calibration and GPS calibration within 10 or 20 miles of that location in a grassy area um, and the Mm. IMU on a flat surface and in an air-conditioned room. Um... Those things are so important. Why? You never, ever, 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 ever do an IMU or a GPS calibration when you're on anywhere near a construction site, let alone a parking garage. So error number one caused error number two, caused error number three, caused error number four. This is a perfect representative example of why construction companies should not just be hiring any Joe Schmo to go do drone mapping. I, I get it. These, these uh, examples um, are a great learning opportunity for this guy particularly, and we do appreciate you bringing in the question. But it also goes to show that we need specific, very specific Um, instructions. We need very specific um, standard operating procedures so that we mitigate these problems, right? Luckily, he didn't have a a really big problem. He almost had a flyaway. Luckily, he's a knowledgeable pilot. He knew how to take over control and he didn't have an issue. That's awesome. That's really cool. Like, honestly, great job. Seriously, good job. But Problem number one, IMU and compass cal should have been done before you get to the site in an area with absolutely no interference or minimal interference, right? Middle of a park, okay, Um, over a grassy knoll. I would prefer a grassy knoll that doesn't look well manicured. Why? The large steel pipes running water below those large manicured fields will sometimes cause you to have errors, like in the park that we uh, had flight mastery at in Denver. Mm. Those huge metal pipes running water below the whole thing. So anyway, so error number one was not taking off from an elevated, let's call it plastic surface, like maybe two cases or something, right? Um, Actually, I 
I, I retrace that statement. Error number one was not conducting the IMU or compass calibration at a different location within 10 to 20 miles of the uh, flying location. Error number two was not taking off from an elevated position, such as a couple of drone cases that don't have metallic items in them. Um, so that's actually a pretty simple fix. Yes. Or a simple hack, if you will. Yes, but it takes, and this is why I keep talking about in our props programs, we have to teach people how to make the decisions to fly or not fly, not simply tell them X equals Y equals Z, like, or X plus Y equals Z. Sure. Because um, it's not always like that, right? Um, and, and this is such a good example to say, you know, the um, convention center, perfect, perfect example of this. The Colorado Convention Center, Vic and I took off from, Right. We looked up the spectrometer. Where's interference? Okay. It was, it was very high. We took out my Sam's club table. We put two landing pads on it Two. I have yet to figure out this scientific magic, but for some reason that rubber really helps, Mm. uh, that pad or that drone eliminate interference. I don't really get it, but whatever long, long and the short of it is, um, we put, uh, the drones on top of the two pads on top of the table and took off from the top of the parking garage. No problem. Three flights later, Vic tried taking off from the pavement. Cause it's just like, he's just forgetting cause we're having a conversation. Right. And he gets a critical error. Okay. Um. So what's another way that we could have discovered if it was going to be a safe flight, right? If this pilot had followed rule number three of the rules of takeoff, we would have known right away. Okay. Safe flight or not. Right. Because I add, I added the control sweep to rule number three. So, but, um, it just goes to show Rob how this is such a great opportunity to learn for other people, right? If you're going to take off from an elevated position, you've got to eliminate the interference some way. Okay. You've got to then fly up to let's say 20 or 30 feet and really make sure that you're going to have a safe flight. And we teach that in flight mastery. Frankly, if there's one reason to attend drone U, it's to go through flight mastery. Uh, if you really want to be a skilled pilot. And I'm not just saying that because I believe that I'm saying that because a lot of other people in the industry, uh, uh, say that and believe that. Uh, and I think the proof is in the pudding when you look at who backs that class. Going back to the error chain, what could he have done differently? IMU calibration at home, air conditioned area, compass cal within tw- 10 to 20 miles of where he was going to take off. When he got to the site, he should have looked at interference and realized that where he was taking off probably wasn't a good idea. The second and the most major failure that caused the flyaway was him conducting the IMU and compass calibration. A lot of people confuse those two calibrations as one. They're two separate calibrations. By him conducting those two calibrations in that very uh, interference-based environment, Mm. it is not surprising at all that he had a flyaway. Yeah. What's surprising is that he stopped it. And for that, my friend, mad respect. So that being said, it also goes to show, did you notice how he talks about Addy, right? This is why Autel, you need to listen. Your drones are not safe until they have attitude mode or a sensor denied flight mode. And I say sensor denied flight mode because I'm realizing that even DJI's Addy mode now has false negatives that can cause it to fly away even in Addy mode. Very unique cases, but there are two recorded cases with Hmm. data that we can say that now. Um, I think the irony in that is that I would imagine their engineers, their decision makers believe that it's safer to not offer attitude mode. Do you think that is that one reason why they would do that? Yes, but that would go that would showcase an extreme myopia from an engineering mindset. I understand. I understand. I'm just saying there's irony in that in that perspective. Um which is to say it may not change anytime soon. True. <laughs> if that's the philosophy. True. Anyways. Very interesting stuff. So you've got to ha- you've got to know what you're doing, and then you know ultimately what what comes to mind as you're talking about all this is that it really is a set of variables that are known that you can develop systems based upon, such that you don't have these issues. You create the systems, you create the good habits, and then you do it every single time, and you don't run into the issues. Yes. I mean that's and that's what props is going to be about is teaching people about that Mm -hmm. and how to do that right, which is super cool. We're going to spread that knowledge and have a bunch of safe drone pilots all over the world. If there's one thing that we're going to do at DroneU, it's making the world a safer and cooler place by making safer and better pilots. And on that bombshell, that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you for watching. (laughs) 